happy to have you back to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Human Architecture, uh, broadcasting live from three different parts of the world, as it should be, to get a better view of us in Honolulu. And we have you, Matt Noblet, back in Boston, Massachusetts, around 5 p.m. ish. We have me, Martin Despang, back near Munich, Germany, at past 11 p.m. and all that thanks to you, Jay Fidel, back in Honolulu around 11.30ish or almost, yeah, something like that. So we're all here. We're all awake. And uh, we have to take a another look at our um, home back in Honolulu because architecture, the high rise way doesn't stop. And uh, so we have to keep an eye on that and see what they're doing there. So today's, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, Jay, me, the uh, Lewis Carroll-ish uh, title is Troubled Tropics, uh, Coconut Brying. So the Troubled Tropics, we don't want to get into politics. You already did here when we were messing around with technology in our uh, think tech transitioning is Florida, because we are uh, finding out detective-wise that uh, last time we were finding out, we're getting architects from Chicago that Howard Hughes is commissioning to do most of the high rises. That was when the last time we came together. Today, we find out then topping it off and sort of concluding, uh, they bring someone in from uh, originally from Miami, Florida. And that, that firm is called Architectonic, huh? And so we will uh, see, checking out what's going on. And it's a little longer story and we're a little uh, delayed or behind because this picture was taken some too many years ago. Does anyone look familiar to you, Jay? Maybe the guy with the gray white hair? No, I, 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 I rather think um, the guy in the orange shirt without the hair looks familiar. <laughs> yeah, but that one only is, uh, adds to our group of bald guys. He's actually a, a fellow German, as uh, Matt is, you know, you're half, half German as far as what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> with your firm, Bain is your architect, and which is German-based. No, the guy on the, on the right side is, is Bob Oda. And Bob Oda uh, used to be with Kamehameha School. Bob is now um, at least wanted to retire, but I heard he, he was brought back because, um, you know, he seemed to be irreplaceable. There's an interesting personal connection. And Bob will hate me for this because he once said, Martin, don't make me appear on these programs again. And, and also I feel guilty because we, we bring him back. And maybe one of the, the underwriters who pulled their funding maybe was Kamehameha School, who were one of the main ones. When uh, this picture, I took that... We had the German uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, coming um, a couple of times. Uh, Jay, you might remember that because we were once covering that pretty pretty well, pretty big times. And I got myself dragged into it and I gave them a tour through our hottest parts of town in development, and that's our Kakaako. And so uh, we started out in, their, in, in our Kakaako, which is Kamehameha ones, and they have this cute little showroom here and make these Lego models. Matt, I, I assume you guys don't do Lego models, right? <laughs> no, we try to be a little bit more uh, sophisticated, <laughs> but with mixed see? results. C, C, C. <laughs> and so um, I, I put Kamehameha in here as, as a joke uh, or kind of cynical, as you can tell. And what you see here is, is, and is what was under development and I think under construction was to the left where the king points out to is the collection. And the one on behind a spear there is this thing by, um, we don't even want to remember his name. Um, doesn't matter, <laughs> maybe for, for a good reason, a developer, Stanford Carr now, I say it anyways. And so in the front there, in front of uh, Bob Oda was what was called the Vida. And the Vida was uh, supposed to be their high rise, high end condominium that Kamehameha School did. Go figure, right? Shouldn't they do something for the people to begin with? I mean, if the cowboy howlies, you know, Howard Hughes do Richie Glitzy, you know, then that's what it is. It's bad enough, right? But Kamehameha School is kind of, at least I thought their obligation should be above and beyond. But that's maybe my naive, wishful thinking. 
you guys chip in, you know, if my provocation is not enough, let me know. I, I give you more. <laughs> so <laughs> you can raise that, Martin. I think it's important to raise that. Um, there, you know, there are two players in Kaka'aka. One is Kamehameha Schools, which is, uh, last time I looked, was $12 billion of assets. Um, and yet, you know, they, they talk about their fiduciary duty. Uh, they've been talking about that for a long time, back into the 90s, I guess, about how they have a duty to their beneficiaries, I guess, to earn the highest um, bottom line they can earn. Um, and this actually gets in the way of, um, you know, of doing projects that help um, people who need affordable housing, doing projects that help the community in general, rather than just their beneficiaries or their bottom line. And I think they've shoved off from the notion of helping the community. Um, I think they really are interested in the fiduciary duty bottom line which is um, tragic in the sense that Kamehameha Schools has uh, huge amounts of land, huge amounts of assets, huge amounts of long-term leases out there, huge cash flow and all that, <clears throat> but th they don't recognize the same level of duty to the community that we might expect. Yeah, and, and Matt, again, we, we always put you on the spot because Jay and I, you know, if if it's fair to say, what do we have to lose? But uh, Matt, you are uh, up there in this league and play, you know, collegially in this area, and you're always very collegial and respectful of your colleagues, and and try to be critical, constructive. Yet, you know, uh, allow yourself to share your opinion. And we have said you have been doing, for example, in Hamburg, uh, the Marco Polo Tower, which is one of the highest end, and you know had you know, high cost and, but at least at its podium, as we said last time at the Unilever building, you know, to, as its neighbor, it, it tries to be very, very inclusive and, and open it up to, to the public. This project here, once again, uh, these are the only uh, remainder that, 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 that they could pull from the web. Uh, we got ourselves in, in the biggest trouble with Kurt Sandburn. And if he would still be uh, up and ranting, you know, we wouldn't have to do it. And and Kurt, this was one of the times when I got into a, an argument with Kurt because he got overly excited. He said, Martin, you know, this could be a cool project because it's going to bring back the good old single loaded corridor. You know, this is this is really cool. This is exciting. And I had to say, and I hated to say, you know, Kurt, uh, unfortunately, I think maybe you're a little too... Uh, optimistic here because to me it's doing not much different what the project uh, did that actually cost you the job which wasn't really a cost because riding for Sybil beat isn't something you can make a living on at all right so the ritzy glitzy carton in in Waikiki has a similar layout and it's not because of bringing back the single loaded corridor back which is great because it gives you cross ventilation and that stuff, but the good old uh, single loaded corridors from the mid-century uh, heydays were treasuring the Mauka as the Makai, while today it's only about view obsession. And this is when you look at it closer, That at least that was my point, and we opened this up for discussion as always. But I said, look, Kurt, you know, this is just basically view, view, view. And then you got the hallways and they might be open or enclosed and you got the, you know, the, the, the egress staircases and you got the elevators and it's likely going to create a pretty ugly butt, which the ritzy glitzy Carlton has, and it couldn't care less for Malka. And that is not what the, the high rises did that we kind of love from the past. And just for the audience again, Matt is working in Boston and all over the world and the office comes from Germany, but you've been in Hawaii through your wife for many decades and, and been sort of, you know, um, you know, observing the scene and the development. So you've seen Kaka'ako uh, the way I haven't seen it, because when I came some 12 years ago, the first towers were already up, but you know it as the little, you know, mm -hmm. harbor city, the little commercial industrial gritty that it used to be with actually 
some probably J. Chinsano umbrellas there, right? And people have well, some... had renderings of Chinsano umbrellas, but they never materialized. As I told you before, I've been waiting for many years to, to see a single Chinsano umbrella. <laughs> let me let me add, by the way, that Howard Hughes, you mentioned the Howard Hughes Corporation a while ago. The Howard Hughes Corporation has made more money in Hawaii than I think any other um, venue uh, that it operates in. Uh, the Howard Hughes Corporation uh, has uh, all this land right up on Ala Moana, um, and it is extraordinary how they have um, departed from any notion of affordability. They're into prices. I personally went down there uh, when they were marketing their, I forget the name of the project, their high-end project at the beginning of their various projects and they were it was a penthouse it was a two-story penthouse with a horizon pool with a fabulous view you talk about views they wanted 110 million dollars um i later found out that they got like 90 or 95 million for that and let me let me say that it was not a local buyer okay not even close you know it's funny that um you know this is this is program on um, netflix about owning New York. And um, there's this guy who is a broker in New York, and he was telling everybody how how successful he was. And, and then he sold um, uh, on 57th Street, uh, a condo overlooking Central Park uh, for 250 million. So I guess I don't feel so bad. Um, I don't think they have any homeless <laughs> or affordable problems in that building. 250 million. And, and they're way ahead of us. But 110 million is way ahead of where you might expect. And I think um, Howard Hughes Corporation isn't doing us any favors here for affordability and for the future uh, of the civil society. Yeah. And you coming from, you know, many realms of the military and of the legal world. And so, you know, we, the two of us met, you know, we as architects, we make ourselves complicit, you know, if we, you know, team up with certain things like that. So let's talk about, and again, um, in, a, in a constructively critical way. So who is the architect of that project that actually fell through? The Vida did not materialize. It was pulled. Supposedly, there wasn't enough buyers, enough interest. And so uh, they pulled it. But um, bring us back to the good old 90s here, or 80s, sorry, 80s. And uh, so what is... What is uh, the firm Architectonica and both of you? I, I grew up with that in Germany, Miami Vice, the original <laughs> one, not the reboot. So Don Johnson, and in the opening jingle of that TV series, a helicopter was zooming. I did these screenshots from what's online. It zoomed onto this building, which was called the Atlantis. And the Atlantis was basically the coming out project for this firm Architectonica, Actually, if you do some historic correct research, it was a guy, Hervin Romney, that I never heard of, and Architectonica, but that was their, that was their project. It was basically an international style tower, a glass box, at least on the, on the one side, on the previous side, that had this iconic, iconic punched a square hole through that that one, you know, Howard Hughes, uh, Jay, want to do affordable. They have this one, wanted to do affordable, and it was a, a, a sort of a copycatting. And and Ron Lindgren, our master of the Hali Kolani, was once sitting in front of it in the Starbucks, and he was saying, well, that was a joke back then. It was a good joke. And he was pointing out to that uh, Howard Hughes tower, and he said, that's a bad joke uh, so far about that. And you know, even the original sort of building there, the Atlantis, if you actually, uh, we always want to judge things actually, not just on form, but on performance uh, based on human thermal comfort and in, in, an, in a natural way and not in a fossil fuel artificial way. So this building here, if you do the orientation check, uh, this is actually the Southern elevation. And as you see, if even we even pointed out in that show, show quote top right, long time ago, you see there's lanai's and they're shaded. So that building was actually in the 80s. Go figure, Ronnie Reagan had took over. That was the beginning of the mess we're in politically. And Architectonica was actually doing a pretty decent job. Not too bad. 
even on the affordability side, guys, when you look up at the prices, this is Miami, this is high end. They're actually not too bad. So this building from the 80s, you know, is, is not doing too bad. This looks like it, right? Looks like just like the previous one. You have all glass, you have the view, but here there's a lot of shade in there. And this one here, you have a lot of sun. I'm always curious how these rendering people don't get sort of redlined, Matt. Um, <laughs> and, and maybe if you can say they're honest, right? They're not cheating. Maybe there's something from the legal realm, Jay, right? If they would like render a shade in there and then there's sun in there, maybe they could sue. I doubt it. <laughs> but they're shamelessly open because we know orientation wise, we see Diamond Head, we see the other Howard Hughes Towers. Uh, this is pretty much, um, uh, you know, baking you at sunset. If you don't have that AC blasting, it's it's going to bake you. And you having shared, uh, Jay, you know someone who knows someone. I also heard of someone who knows someone who knows someone who has one of the first uh, unit in the first tower, and they, they, they're they spending three grand on AC blasting. You have to keep that AC blasting, that fossil fuel, to not get you baked or microwaved. And this is uh, this is this is pretty uh, pretty obscene. Uh, this this project here is actually now a little bit of fooling. The other one was was called the uh, the Vida. This is called the Alia, and this is actually uh, not yet by the firm Architectonica. They are not back in Honolulu because this is another firm from California here who is actually now doing the project for Kamehameha School. That we're now excited, right? We can say, hey, you know, maybe they learned their lesson. They listened to Hugh Jay, you know, and they must do better, must do, do more for the people. I think they do for us Germans, Matt, here, right? Because in their in their marketing, you read a lot of German. What is that? You didn't even bold out Hans Kroll. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. Shame on me. Exactly. You found me. I wasn't even. They're, they're playing to people outside of Hawaii. And uh, yeah, they, that, that doesn't answer the problem about the shortage of housing here at all. Yeah, and this is this is again, Matt. You know, you have the best of um, bioclimatic engineering to offer in your guys' work, together with Thomas Auer, who we had uh, visiting us and talking to us, and and you guys really have good German engineering that that helps. You know, on on the level of bioclimatics on the level of inclusivity and Gaganau and German appliances and and Bosch and Hans Grohe here uh you know that is that is not the stuff that we want to export in the conditions we have right this is exactly what you say this is for the bucks this is for the money this is not for the people and again we were when this first came out, the project, you know, the they had this kind of fuzzy rendering at, at the bottom right. And obviously here with DeSoto, we were previewing that thing and we weren't quite sure. And you always say, don't judge a book by the cover. But now the cover of the book becomes more apparent here. <laughs> and I forgot my my Maui Jim, uh, you know, tinted sunglasses for tonight, but this is pretty much what it reminds us of, right? And one of the posters of the Aviator movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, he wears one of these reflective glasses and that's how all these towers basically come across. And now we're going back to this sort of tinted, uh, you know, bronze colored, uh, you know, mullions and, and even glass. And you see down there a rendering by Kamehameha School. And you see that it's it kind of telling. They don't even show our Kaka'ako, their Kaka'ako. They actually sh only show their collection, which is also the question. I mean, we appreciate they didn't brand it, you know, with Hawaiian names, but the collection, what do they collect? You know, it's pretty obvious what they collect. What does one collect, right? Not money for the poor people, but for the rich. Well, you know, uh, one of the things about Howard Hughes Corporation is that all of their projects end with a vowel, maybe two or three vowels. Uh, they're all Hawaiian names, Hawaiian words and place names that I never heard before, but that's what they focus on to make the buyers, the market, think that this is really a native Hawaiian kind of development. It isn't. And what's worse, Martin, Matt, is that when they get $95 million, that's a comparable, right? It's a real estate comparable. And that goes in the books 
And the appraisers who largely work for these big corporate capital concentrations, the appraisers take that as a very serious comparable. And so they appraise everything around, everything in the neighborhood on the basis of these really high valuations because a transaction is a valuation, right? So the result is not only are they not providing affordable housing, they're making the housing in the environment unaffordable too. It has a secondary negative effect when you have these, these buildings that are so expensive and sell so ex at such high prices. Now, I know that doesn't necessarily feed into your architectural lens here, but the mm -hmm. fact is, I think, you know, I've seen a lot of your work, Martin and Matt, and it's creative, but it isn't necessarily at $110 million. Um, it is it is built for the, the people. Um, and th that's, I think, the the demand that is the need that should be filled. And I I assume a lot of the work you're doing or talking about at the School of Architecture and otherwise um, is dedicated to trying to find a way to bring housing to the ordinary people. Yeah, and 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 architecturally, as you called us out on that one, Jay, and and Matt, now we're getting more into the gist of it because there is a floor loaded corridor that we've seen for a hundred years, and again, the single loaded corridor was the Hawaiianized way, but now we're kind of falling back to. Uh, imperialist, um, um, uh, you know, invasive uh, floor plans here. And then while, you know, all these kind of soft edge, kind of sexy, curvy, again, can we call them lanai's? Probably not. They're only balconies with fixed glazing, which is wrong because it gets hot behind. And what gets it worse is that you don't see them anymore on the Malka side. So, so these projects get more and more value engineered, right? That that collection building that we see just just in front of it. You know, if you know, we uh, move me over here. That's I'm now in front of the collection or next to it. That one at least had lanai's to both sides. Now they're they're doing them on the diamond head side to the ocean and to the Mauka and, and to Eva, they don't even do that. They do that kind of, you know, little bit of moved out bay window, or whatever, whatever that is. And the show quote at the top left uh, tries to point out how, I mean, Jay, I came to America because it was the holy land for me. I mean, you know, America who had, you know, given refuge to the great German masters of the Mies van der Rohe's and the Gropius's and the Marcel Breuer's, right? And they could live up to their full potential in the United States and come up with architecture that was so much more heroic that because we screwed up so badly in Germany, we never were able to do that. And even like the corporate, this is actually a HDR's headquarters in Omaha, Nebraska. That is this sort of box and it's, 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 Power, it's actually coated with real gold. Someone told me if you if you replace that, you can make a fortune by recycling the real gold that was tinted on the windows. I mean, that's America at its in its 60s and 70s at its at its best, right? But all we do is bring back sort of a fake, you know, watered down version of that more than half a century later. There's no evolvement, you know. There's no evolution. Everything we see in your in your guys' work, Matt, we're 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 lacking there, which is really quite unfortunate. And you know, being romantic and sentimental, yes, this is our, you know, holding on to good old German um, uh, Wertarbeit or whatever you want to call it, craftsmanship, our old PIing mobile. And we moved with Philip Moiser, who is uh, wants to do a, a city guide uh, for his for his series here with us. And I was honest to him. I I brought him into Howard Hughes' showroom because we're back with Howard Hughes here. And I said, hey, um, I sat down with my co-authors, Desoto Brown and uh, Don Hibbard and and Bill Chapman, and we agreed on after serious discussion that none of these new projects will make it into the book because they don't meet the criteria of climatic and cultural compliance with our most beautiful <laughs> natural environment. 
And you know, if he thinks this is in the way of selling the book, he has to ask someone else to do the book. And I give it to Philip. Here he is. He said, "No, he, I trust you guys. You do the book the way you want to do the book." And we and we talk, Jay. We have the thanks to you. The, this will be the only guide of like 300 ones that has for every for the viewer extra viewing material of uh, comprised of the many shows we did. And there's a QR code. And when they like the project, they can go on the link and they can enjoy the project or at least hear about the project in more depth. So, you know, there's other people who are critical about that too and are not ashamed to talk about it. So what Howard Hughes is now actually doing um, is, is now uh, next to where Kamehameha starts, they have their uh, one of their last projects and that's where they sort of borrow back Architectonica the architect uh, seems they seem to make some deals here, and that is called the Launiu. There we go. There's one of these must be obscene. We must have you know the Soto back for that because he should be offended from his Hawaiian side that that his language basically gets gets used gets used and abused. And isn't this kind of a cynical comparison here? Because we're comparing the Atlantis once again from 1982 in Miami, Florida. And here we're seeing their project in uh, Kaka'ako, and it looks the same, right? Half a century later, the same old. There's no involvement, right? If you look at the work of Banish Architecten from the 80s and now, uh, you know, where you with Stefan have brought it from the social level that it always had with Gunther, the founder of the company, but you moved it over and expanded it. You didn't move it over. You just expanded it to the next big, um, you know, when Gunther was a, was a, was a, um, you know, uh, subway, uh, uh, you know, lieutenant, the social was the big, but then, you know, once, you know, Helmut Kohl and Ronnie Reagan took over and screwed it up big times ever since we have another big problem which is saving the world's climate. And that's when you guys kicked in and said, hey, we got to add this too. What about these firms? Where is their, where is their social and where is their environmental conscience? I don't see it. So then maybe there's some hope left. So let's give it the more benefit of doubt. These are the first renderings they basically put out. And they, they sell it as along the podium, the facade will create a three-dimensional appearance mimicking the ocean. This is pure postmodern, right? This is basically fossil formalism because the ocean mm -hmm. is an orgasm, right? And an orgasmic, <laughs> organic thing, right? It's, it's alive as orgasms are, right? <laughs> this is this is not even masturbation. Excuse me. This is this is silly. You know, you think people are stupid. They buy that literally and figuratively speaking, and and it's pretty much a shame. And the other sort of star architect tower by Genie Gang and only us guys. We don't want to be chauvies or sexist, so we gave Genie the most, you know, attention and benefit of doubt. And actually where one wants to move in is maybe as in other projects, the parking garage, that looks the most appealing. I think this could be a Banish project here for housing because you got lanai's, you got planter boxes and you got stuff basically growing up, you know, that is more attractive than actually up. So the cars are, you can get better, more human, you know, positions than people, which is, I sound cynical, but I, what else? <laughs> And thanks, Jay. Yes, uh, the emerging generation. This is by uh, a doctoral a student of ours from what's it, a year ago, uh, um, and she took on and say, "Let's inhabit these parking garages." And she came up with some pretty interesting proposals. And then here's genies again. Um, the vegetation, you know, is takes some time to crawl up there, but this one here um, is really. Um, um, it, it reminds us of Genie's coming out, by the way. Why? Right? That's the Aqua Tower in Chicago, so many mm -hmm. years ago. And this is nothing different. It's basically the same thing. And as it reveals on the right, which is what they put out there in Design Boom, which is something for people interested in design, as you can figure. Once you have a frontal view, as in the middle stories, in the middle floors they show here, um, there there is no uh, effect anymore. There's no, 
You know, there's no such thing when I'm up here on this level, there is a, no appearance of whatever waviness there. And also the sun is, 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 is out west, is to the right. It blasts, it's on the same level. So this is not doing anything in keeping you cool into the building. This is basically just uh, patterns, formal mm -hmm. patterns that have little. I mean, Martin, the, the question I have is, you know, if you, I mean, you've made the you've made the connection already by showing very remarkably similar projects in places like Chicago and Miami and uh, New York. And I, you know, I guess at some level, I ask myself if I have money even to purchase something in Honolulu, why would I want the exact same thing that I have already in the, on the East Coast or in Toronto or anywhere else? I mean, this is really the missed opportunity is that Honolulu, you know, Hawaii is such a special place, uh, climatically, culturally, um, and, you know, to not develop the city or you know not, to not to not sort of acknowledge and sort of celebrate that specialness i think is really the that's to me the the missed opportunity if i just go up in this tower and i open the door and i'm in the same climate and i have the same you know i might have a different view but it's not about the view actually it's really i mean you know for me the moment you start a plane and you smell uh the you smell the breeze and the in the flowers and things at the honolulu airport i mean you know what other airport in the world do you move outside as soon as you get off the plane? I mean, there's just so many special ways to capture what it means to be there. And to me, that's, that's really the missed opportunity in, in some of these, these, this development is, is what makes it uniquely Hawaiian. It is. And this is, this is intentionally again, provocative here, because if we, if we look at it scientifically and not just artistically, um, and you just really turn the AC off, it, it shows, right? It shows how wrong it is. So you can only afford it on the expense of fossil fuel otherwise. And even behind me, the curvy little reddish color-coded thing are these lanais um, to the south, to the southeast. And it's like when, you know, us howlies with a light skin mm -hmm. and we're very cancer, you know, um, uh, exposed. And when we don't, it, it's like when we don't shave, you know, here off, you know, and still some stuff that's still there still grows, right? Where it grows. Um, I basically with, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, Bill Chapman and basically, um, you know, Richard Lowe, we have the same dermatologist, Janice Matsunaga. Hi, Janice. Thank you for being there for us. And she always says, wherever you can still have hair, that is the best sun protection. Keep it, right? So here, <laughs> using that metaphor, these kind of shaved out areas are problematic. I mean, you know, uh, you know health-wise problematic because you get that sunburn buildings get that sunburn you know and and just like that silly sunburn tattoo down there at the bottom left which is really bad and DeSoto will say as he always has said you know Martin you Germans are these sunbathing obsessed you know people yeah but that's because we have so little of it right whenever it's there these few months in the summer we want to soak it up right while in Honolulu, no, it's always there and you got to basically, you know, shy away from it. So here it is at the top left, long time ago, reported on Jeannie Gang's Aquatawa. And then the, the Lilia project in Waikiki, which is a rental project, but for outrageous prices. So that doesn't cut it to do it for the people, Jay. So as you said, Matt, this is just the same old. This is this one trick pony. It should be a turtle, not a pony because we don't have pony originally in Hawaii. So one tr a one turtle pony show here with these wavy <laughs> whimsical things here. And then again, th these are shameless. The marketing people here, they say the Lao Niu. We need the Soto again. We get to that later here, what it means actually, what they're alluding to. Gives me Miami vibes. I'm reminded of the One Park Tower project in Miami with similar exterior stylings. This is exactly what you just said, uh, Matt, but you said it in a constructively critical way. 
they really might mean that or they think people you know get fooled by this that it's okay right and and these are two tropics and again the the render people are shameless or honest to show how deep the sun goes in and you have the same thing and you know you and i and and jay as well we would you would consult us jay and say okay if i'm interested in one unit which you just said you know back then you were kind of we're pretending to, we would advise you to take which unit met in that building because we got the North era there. So which unit would we advise Jay to get? So North is up as usually in plans it should be. So which is the unit that he would get least in trouble with? Because the, the fenestration and this sort of waving around it is the same all, on all sides, more or less, right? Mm. So... If you're getting a west or east unit, you get baked because the sun is so low and, and bakes you, right? To the south, again, where you take a unit where that lanai bows out the most, you don't take the one where it bows back. And to the north, you're totally fine. So buy mm -hmm. one to the north orientation. But mm -hmm. as you know, when it's all boarded up and the sliding doors are closed, you blast the AC, it doesn't matter, right? It, well, yeah, I mean, for us it matters, but for them it doesn't, you know? For some, so, for some future generation it matters. Yeah, the ones that we try to provoke, right? So as you say, you know, Jay, up, up there the hill, the university hill. And here they come out of the bushes with what you said, Jay, and Matt, where's the affordability? And here's this sort of quasi interview they have with the realtor people. And it's like, okay, where is there affordable housing in it? No, no, it's not there because uh, Howard Hughes has already satisfied it in other projects. They do these little studios here at the podium, uh, which is camouflage the parking, but this is ritzy glitzy studios. These are not for poor people. These are studios for, for rich people. And talking about your friend, you know, Thomas Auer, when he was there recently, we dragged him to Howard Hughes as well. He wanted to see it. So he looked at this, you know, new uh, Howard Hughes Tower. And as we were talking, you know, we said, hey, stop here, guys. It's ready to move in climatically, thermally. <laughs> you, know, you get the breeze through, you got it shaded. Of course, Jay, the normal people, if we could pick you up on that one, you would say, hey, wait a minute, you know, this is a ruin or it's not finished. But that's an aesthetical judgment, right? On, on maybe outdated and maybe, uh, you know, brought in, in invasive uh, paradigms, but just thermally, comfortably, you want to be in there. You're actually good. If the AC is not even there, the breeze goes through, the sun gets kept out, so it actually works. One of the things about the AC, Martin and Matt, is it costs plenty. Um, and the uh, common area expenses for these projects is astronomical. You know, back in the day when the condominium form was first um, uh, propagated, um, you know, the, uh, the, the monthly common area maintenance charge for an average condominium unit was, you know, 100, 200, maybe $300, maybe. Um, but it, it, uh, it didn't creep up. It, it, uh, it escalated faster than the eye could follow. And now, if you have one of these expensive units, the other, the back side of that is that you've got to pay maintenance that is astronomical. Thousands upon thousands of common area expense per month. Um, and so um, that makes it all the less affordable for an average local resident. I, I think it's got to be worth mentioning. And, and the architect, the engineer who builds this, designs this, really has to keep that in mind <clears throat> um, to get back to the old days, to be a little nostalgic in, in terms of com common uh, area maintenance. Um, we're a long way from that now. And the problem is it's a one-way street. It's not likely that buildings will be built uh, with common area maintenance numbers that are like they were in the past. No, these things and are all one way, one way ratchets. And and you being a um, a Kailuian of some sort, Matt, through your wife, mm -hmm. and Kailua being next to Lanikai, do you recall uh, Steve Au's house in the very end of Lanikai, his treehouse? Oh yeah. 
So this, there couldn't have been a better segueing Jay to what you just said because this is the nostalgic about back in the days. So on the on the location of this new project we're talking about used to be uh, uh, projects and next door with uh, with a Victoria place that basically replaced Ward Warehouse. And on this lot here was was Ward Plaza, both uh, architect Steve Al. And Steve, with these projects, he went from renting to buying, but he had still so little money because fees were moderate, kept moderate. So he tried to find it. This was back in the days in the 70s. We're not talking these days, right? So he had to find, I think he found it at the, yeah, we know he found it at the very, very end of, of Lanikai, which wasn't as exclusive as it's right now. And it was an unbuildable hill. And he couldn't afford to do land movement. There's a show about it, needless to say, um, you know, Steve's uh, treehouse that we recommend everyone to watch. And he had, I think, a $50,000 budget for the house. And, and the lot was like $70,000. Well, that was back in the days and we got inflation. And, you know, of course, it's worth now more. But still, he tried to, he had to be cheap. He had to be affordable. And it's a beautiful house. You know, generations of children and grandchildren have stumbled down the staircase, which is primarily is. And then there's like a landing and there's some space and so on. It's a beautiful house that blends in, that fits in. It's out of wood. It's out of timber. This is where we're going always in the shows, not anymore uh, today, because you always need to remind us, Jay, of uh, not uh, being endless here and talking. So we're reaching, <laughs> you know, or have reached. Oh, I, I, um, I absolutely agree. Uh, we cannot be endless. And uh, I'd, like, I'd like to remind you, Martin, that we all got to go now. <laughs> I know, but this is a good point because I think we got us all excited about how to reconnect to these good old days. You called us out on that, Jay, so we will next time when we get back together. And we need you back, Matt, because again, you are the 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 Kailuian, so you are the utmost <laughs> expert in the yeah. area where where Steve had his uh, was residing and from where he was operating. So well, as as you perfectly put it, uh, Jay. And the question is, how do we get us reconnected to that? And we can already tell you, we need the emerging generation to that. Because speaking about myself, I'm too old farty for it. We need these young people <laughs> whose future it is anyways. So with that, thank you guys for scratching the surface of what's going on with a conclusion of Kakaako.